A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain Chapter Twenty Six The First Newspaper When I told the King I was going out disguised as a petty freeman to scour the country and familiarize myself with the humbler life of the people, he was all afire with the novelty of the thing in a minute, and was bound to take a chance in the adventure himself. Nothing should stop him. He would drop everything and go along. It was the prettiest idea he had run across for many a day. He wanted to glide out the back way and start at once, but I showed him that that wouldn't answer. You see, he was billed for the king's evil, to touch for it, I mean, and it wouldn't be right to disappoint the house, and it wouldn't make a delay worth considering, anyway. It was only a one-night stand, and I thought he ought to tell the queen he was going away. He clouded up at that, and looked sad. I was sorry I'd spoken, especially when he said mournfully, thou forgettest that lancelot is here and where lancelot is she noteth not the going forth of the king nor what day he returneth of course i changed the subject yes guinevere was beautiful it is true but take her all round she was pretty slack i never meddled in these matters they weren't my affair but i did hate to see the way things were going on and i don't mind saying that much many's the time she had asked me sir boss hast seen sir lancelot about but if ever she went fretting around for the king i didn't happen to be around at the time there was a very good layout for the king's evil business very tidy and creditable the king sat under a canopy of state about him were clustered a large body of the clergy in full canonicals conspicuous both for location and personal outfit stood marinel a hermit of the quack doctor species to introduce the sick all abroad over the spacious floor and clear down to the doors in a thick jumble lay or sat the scrofulous under a strong light it was as good as a tableau in fact it had all the look of being gotten up for that though it wasn't there were eight hundred sick people present the work was slow it lacked the interest of novelty for me because i had seen the ceremonies before the thing soon became tedious but the proprieties required me to stick it out. The doctor was there for the reason that in all such crowds there were many people who only imagined something was the matter with them, and many who were consciously sound, but wanted the immortal honor of fleshly contact with a king, and yet others who pretended to illness in order to get the piece of coin that went with the touch. Up to this time this coin had been a wee little gold piece worth about a third of a dollar. When you consider how much that amount of money would buy, in that age and country, and how usual it was to be scrofulous when not dead, you would understand that the annual king's evil appropriation was just the river and harbor bill of that government for the grip it took on the treasury, and the chance it afforded for skinning the surplus. So I had privately concluded to touch the treasury itself for the king's evil. I covered six-sevenths of the appropriation into the treasury a week before starting from Camelot on my adventures, and ordered that the other seventh be inflated into five-cent nickels and delivered into the hands of the head clerk of the King's Evil Department, a nickel to take the place of each gold coin, you see, and do its work for it. It might strain the nickel some, but I judged it could stand it. As a rule, I do not approve of watering stock, but I considered it square enough in this case, for it was just a gift, anyway. Of course, you can water a gift as much as you want to, and I generally do. The old coin and silver coins of the country were of ancient and unknown origin, as a rule, but some of them were Roman. They were ill-shapen, and seldom rounder than a moon that is a week past the full. They were hammered, not minted and they were so worn with use that the devices upon them were as illegible as blisters, and looked like them. I judged that a sharp, bright new nickel, with a first-rate likeness of the king on one side of it, and Guinevere on the other, and a blooming pious motto, would take the tuck out of scrofula as handy as a nobler coin, and please the scrofulous fancy more. And I was right. This batch was the first it was tried on, and it worked to a charm. The saving and expense was a notable economy. You will see that by these figures. We touched a trifle over seven hundred of the eight hundred patients. At former rates this would have cost the government about two hundred and forty dollars. At the new rate we pulled through for about thirty-five dollars, thus saving upwards of two hundred dollars at one swoop. 
to appreciate the full magnitude of this stroke consider these other figures the annual expenses of a national government amount to the equivalent of a contribution of three days average wages of every individual of the population counting every individual as if he were a man if you take a nation of sixty million where average wages are two dollars per day three days wages taken from each individual will provide three hundred and sixty million dollars and pay the government's expenses in my day in my own country this money was collected from imposts and the citizen imagined that the foreign importer paid it and it made him comfortable to think so whereas in fact it was paid by the american people and was so equally and exactly distributed among them that the annual cost to the one hundred millionaire and the annual cost to the sucking child of the day laborer was precisely the same each paid six dollars nothing could be equaler than that i reckon well scotland and ireland were tributary to arthur and the united populations of the british islands amounted to something less than one million a mechanic's average wage was three cents a day when he paid his own keep by this rule the national government's expenses were ninety thousand dollars a year or about two hundred and fifty dollars a day thus by the substitution of nickels for gold on a king's evil day i not only injured no one dissatisfied no one but pleased all concerned and saved four-fifths of that day's national expense into the bargain a saving which would have been the equivalent of eight hundred thousand dollars in my day in america in making this substitution i had drawn upon the wisdom of a very remote source the wisdom of my boyhood for the true statesman does not despise any wisdom however lowly may be its origin in my boyhood i had always saved my pennies and contributed buttons to the foreign missionary cause the buttons would answer the ignorant savage as well as the coin the coin would answer me better than the buttons all hands were happy and nobody hurt marinel took the patients as they came he examined the candidate if he couldn't qualify he was warmed off if he could he was passed along to the king a priest pronounced the words they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover then the king stroked the ulcers while the reading continued finally the patient graduated and got his nickel the king hanging it around his neck himself and was dismissed would you think that that would cure it certainly did any mummery will cure if the patient's faith is strong in it up by astolat there was a chapel where the virgin had once appeared to a girl who used to herd geese around there the girl said so herself and they built the chapel upon that spot and hung a picture in it representing the occurrence a picture which you would think it dangerous for a sick person to approach whereas on the contrary thousands of the lame and the sick came and prayed before it every year and went away whole and sound and even the well could look upon it and live of course when i was told these things i did not believe them but when i went there and saw them i had to succumb i saw the cures affected myself and they were real cures and not questionable i saw cripples whom i had seen around camelot for years on crutches arrive and pray before that picture and put down their crutches and walk off without a limp there were piles of crutches there which had been left by such people as a testimony in other places people operated on a patient's mind without saying a word to him and cured him in others experts assembled patients in a room and prayed over them and appealed to their faith and those patients went away cured wherever you find a king who can't cure the king's evil you can be sure that the most valuable superstition that supports his throne the subject's belief in the divine appointment of his sovereign has passed away in my youth the monarchs of england had ceased to touch for the evil but there was no occasion for this diffidence they could have cured it forty-nine times in fifty well when the priest had been droning for three hours and the good king polishing the evidences and the sick were still pressing forward as plenty as ever i got to feeling intolerably bored i was sitting by an open window not far from the canopy of state for the five hundredth time a patient stood forward to have his repulsivenesses stroked again those words were being droned out they shall lay their hands on the sick when outside there rang clear as a clarion a note that enchanted my soul and tumbled thirteen worthless centuries about my ears camelot 
weekly hosanna and literary volcano latest eruption only two cents all about the big miracle in the valley of holiness one greater than kings had arrived the newsboy but i was the only person in all that throng who knew the meaning of this mighty birth and what this imperial magician was come into the world to do i dropped a nickel out of the window and got my paper the adam newsboy of the world went around the corner to get my change it is around the corner yet it was delicious to see a newspaper again yet i was conscious of a secret shock when my eye fell upon the first batch of display headlines i had lived in a clammy atmosphere of reverence respect deference so long that they sent a quivery little cold wave through me high times in the valley of holiness the water works corked brer merlin works his arts but gets left but the boss scores on his first innings the miraculous well uncorked amid awful outbursts of infernal fire and smoke and thunder the buzzard roost astonished unparalleled rejoinings and so on and so on yes it was too loud once i could have enjoyed it and seen nothing out of the way about it but now its note was discordant it was good arkansas journalism but this was not arkansas moreover the next to the last line was calculated to give offense to the hermits and perhaps lose us their advertising indeed there was too lightsome a tone of flippancy all through the paper it was plain i had undergone a considerable change without noticing it i found myself unpleasantly affected by pert little irreverencies which would have seemed but proper and airy graces of speech at an earlier period of my life there was an abundance of the following breed of items and they discomforted me local smoke and cinders sir lancelot met up with old king agrivance of ireland unexpectedly last week over on the moor south of sir balmoral le merveilleuse hogs dasture the widow has been notified expedition number three will start a doat uh, the first of next month on a search for sir sagramour le desirous it is in command of the renowned knight of the red lawns assisted by sir persant of inde who is competent intelligent courteous and in every way a brick and further assisted by sir palamides the saracen who is no huckleberry himself this is no picnic these boys mean business the readers of the hosanna will regret to learn that the handsome and popular sir charolais of gaul who during his four weeks stay at the bull and halibut this city has won every heart by his polished manners and elegant conversation will pull out to-day for home give us another call charlie the business end of the funeral of the late sir dalliance the duke's son of cornwall killed in an encounter with the giant of the knotted bludgeon last tuesday on the borders of the plain of enchantment was in the hands of the ever affable and efficient mumble prince of undertakers then whom there exists none by whom it were a more satisfying pleasure to have the last sad offices performed give him a trial the cordial thanks of the hosanna office are due from editor down to devil to the ever courteous and thoughtful lord high stood of the palace's third assistant vert for several saucers of ice cream a quality calculated to make the ei of the recipients humid with gratitude and it done it when this administration wants to chalk up a desirable name for early promotion the hosanna would like a chance to suggest the demoiselle irene dewlap of south astolat is visiting her uncle the popular host of the cattlemen's boarding hoax liver lane this city young barker the bellows mender is home again and looks much improved by his vacation round-up among the outlying smithies see his ad of course it was good enough journalism for a beginning i knew that quite well and yet it was somehow disappointing the court circular pleased me better indeed its simple and dignified respectfulness was a distinct refreshment to me after all those disgraceful familiarities but even it could have been improved 
do what one may there is no getting an air of variety into a court circular i acknowledge that there is a profound monotonousness about its facts that baffles and defeats one's sincerest efforts to make them sparkle and enthuse the best way to manage in fact the only sensible way is to disguise repetitiousness of fact under variety of form skin your fact each time and lay on a new cuticle of words it deceives the eye you think it is a new fact it gives you the idea that the court is carrying on like everything this excites you and you drain the whole column with a good appetite and perhaps never notice that it's a barrel of soup made out of a single bean clarence's way was good it was simple it was dignified it was direct and businesslike all i say is it was not the best way court circular on monday the king rode in the park on tuesday the king rode in the park on wednesday the king rode in the park on thursday the king rode in the park on friday the king rode in the park on saturday the king rode in the park on sunday the king rode in the park however take the paper by and large i was vastly pleased with it little crudities of a mechanical sort were observable here and there but there were not enough of them to amount to anything and it was good enough arkansas proof-reading anyhow and better than was needed in arthur's day and realm as a rule the grammar was leaky and the construction more or less lame but i did not much mind these things they are common defects of my own and one mustn't criticize other people on grounds where he can't stand perpendicular himself i was hungry enough for literature to want to take down the whole paper at this one meal but i got only a few bites and then had to postpone because the monks around me beseeched me so with eager questions what is this curious thing what is it for is it a handkerchief saddle blanket part of a shirt what is it made of how thin it is and how dainty and frail and how it rattles will it wear do you think and won't the rain injure it is it writing that appears on it or is it only ornamentation they suspected it was writing because those among them who knew how to read latin and had a smattering of greek recognized some of the letters but they could make nothing out of the result as a whole i put my information in the simplest form i could it is a public journal i will explain what that is another time it is not cloth it is made of paper some time i will explain what paper is the lines on it are reading matter and not written by hand but printed by and by i will explain what printing is a thousand of these sheets have been made all exactly like this in every minute detail they can't be told apart then they all broke out with exclamations of surprise and admiration a thousand verily a mighty work a year's work for many men no merely a day's work for a man and a boy they crossed themselves and whiffed out a protective prayer or two ah a miracle a wonder dark work of enchantment i let it go at that then i read in a low voice to as many as could crowd their shaven heads within hearing distance part of the account of the miracle of the restoration of the well and was accompanied by astonished and reverent ejaculations all through ah how true amazing amazing these be the very haps as they happened in marvellous exactness and might they take this strange thing in their hands and feel of it and examine it they would be very careful yes they took it handling it as cautiously and devotedly as if it had been some holy thing come from some supernatural region and gently felt of its texture caressed its pleasant smooth surface with lingering touch and scanned the mysterious characters with fascinated eyes these grouped bent heads these charmed faces these speaking eyes how beautiful to me for was not this my darling and was not all this mute wonder and interest and homage a most eloquent tribute and unforced compliment to it i knew then how a mother feels when women whether strangers or friends take her new baby and close themselves about it with one eager impulse and bend their heads over it in a tranced adoration that makes all the rest of the universe vanish out of their consciousness and be as if it were not for that time 
i knew how she feels and that there is no other satisfied ambition whether of king conqueror or poet that ever reaches halfway to that serene far summit or yields half so divine a contentment during all the rest of the seance my paper travelled from group to group all up and down and about that huge hall and my happy eye was upon it always and i sat motionless steeped in satisfaction drunk with enjoyment yes this was heaven i was tasting it once if i might never taste it more End of chapter 26